What's going on guys? So today on the channel, Virgil's here, former long drive heavyweight. I was in the featherweight division back at the time. And uh, he's gonna show us how to hit some big dogs. If you if you can't see the driver face right now, it's uh, it's very punished right in the center where you're supposed to hit a driver. So I guess we're gonna talk about that a little bit today too. Center is a contact. Center is a hit, it's not a bad deal. <laughs> I really think that one of the biggest keys is to make sure you don't get the shaft too long. I think the, yeah. the industry right now is at 46 or 46 and a half. It's terrible. I don't let anybody that's under six foot three have anything more than 44 and a half. This is 44 and a quarter. Uh, centerness of hit will give you more distance. So not even 45 and a half. Yeah, it's 44 and a, 44 and a quarter is mine. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you're moving it at 118 at 44 and a quarter? Yeah. Yeah, that's not normal. That's like two inches short of in some cases right now. That's right. And I've actually known that the, one of the hardest things is like, a good friend of ours, Timmy, who's yeah. a club fitter, he found that I hit 43 and a half inch longer than all of them, but it's hard to find shafts heavy enough for the, weight. To, for the weight. Ah. So there's the balance point. But 43 and a half is the shaft that I hit the absolute longest end in the center. And it also flattens the lie angle out. That allows me to not hook it. Yeah. So, I mean, all of those things, that's another reason why I like shorter is it makes the club sit flatter. Nice. So back in your long drive days when you were hitting the big dog, right? Obviously that technique is different than your standard gamer. Mm -hmm. So today, let's just kind of like lay out three scenarios where you got your standard issue, maybe not even the first tee ball, but just nothing nothing to worry about. Fairway's wide open, you can uh -huh. hit as far down the pipe as you want. Then let's give it the how to send one when you got the wind, not the wind today, but mm -hmm. the wind's absolutely primed. What do you do for that? That yeah. little down bristle looking yeah. for the, the big hitter. Yep. And then when you got to put one in play. Right. Let's just talk about those three kind of shots for the driver. Let's see how you do it differently. I'll be on the call with the numbers. We're going to let the beast with the biggest swing do the thing with driver. As you all know, that is not my specialty. So if, if we're talking just first tee, competitive tee ball, I'm a big believer in just understanding that almost every error comes from under coiling. Right. So Jack Nicholas wrote in his book, My Story, he had first tee jitters. He said he wanted to grip it light, turn until I couldn't. Finish and balance. So that's that's really some, one of my favorite thoughts to go play. So I get in here, take my standard grip, ball position. It probably is off my big toe of my front foot. Yep. And I actually the only thing I think about is to keep steady, but turn until I can't turn, and then swing to the finish. So that's a miss hit. It's that's, in the heel slightly. Yeah, say a little heel cutter, right? Yep. Still had a 122 club head speed, so even with uh, the camera rolling, yep. and at 44 and a quarter, that's I mean that's that's real speed for a man hitting the 5.0 number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell you, it's uh, it's humbling. Our technology's making a huge difference. Like I yeah. hit it probably longer now than I did when I was younger. Yeah, I was almost out of college, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, to me, once again, see if I can do a better job. Stay centered, turn until I can't, swing to the finish. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, that was hammered. Now, what would you like? What would you say the most common? Yeah, one nine, one one uh, seventy nine ball speed, two eighty in the air for three hundy. That's with the range ball. We yeah. normalize that bad boy to what a real golf ball was. One eighty six, three twenty, three forty seven. How you doing? <laughs> now, real quick on that, like let's sit back and let's stay on the stop, subject of uh, centers of contact for a second. Yep. It, 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 how, you know the Healy hit is probably the common miss, and let's just kind of let's just kind of null out the length of the driver probably being the majority of the problem in that scenario. Mm -hmm. What other things do you see are probably a common flaw for the Healy? Because I see it all the time. I don't really see a high toe miss very often. It's usually the heel that I see people hitting. So it. there's two, right? There's the slicer, yeah, and the stuck guy, yeah, right. So yeah. when you see the slicer, they generally sway, yeah. And under coil. Yeah. So there's no depth whatsoever. Right. So they'll they start out. So now the golf club is way outside the ball. Yeah. And they got to pull the, it in. The brain's like, oh, I'm gonna miss. And there it is. Right. Path hard, hard opposite hard field. Yeah. Opposite field, right? So then then the, the guy who's stuck, he's probably making a, a big turn. And then he's overdoing yeah. the slot move. Yep. He's hanging back, the club's traveling and it's this out way. Late. And it's in to out this way. Yeah, that's right? probably your like early steep, late shallow guy. 
Oh, for sure. Right. They get and a little usually cross somebody the line. that's pretty talented. Yeah. There's a lot of potential in the game. Yeah. Usually right. probably a little across the line, a little steep in the start, and then just kind of slings it out the very end. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now let's, let's paint a picture. The wind's down a little bit. So let's take advantage of a low wind day and turn it around. Say the wind's coming behind us. You got par five. It's just asking for you to send it. Yep. How do you change that setup? So this, again, is probably more for somebody who's proficient with driver. We're not talking, yep. you know, if you can't find it, don't necessarily take this on so yet. You're, so what you're <laughs> going to see here is my tee height's going to change. Go higher? So I'm going to go higher. Yeah. So about half a ballish? Half a ball, right? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the ball slightly more forward because inevitably, if I'm trying to rip it, there's going to be more yank. Yep. All right? Yep. So more yank is going to have a tendency to get my path to head more in to out. Yep. Keep in mind that the ball position ultimately dictates the flight, right? So it's in an arc. So if I move the ball forward, it's going to allow me to catch my path more right. More back to the right, because mm -hmm. I literally hate hooking the golf ball. <laughs> so I will do anything I can to go full bore. Yeah, in case y'all miss that, he really hates hooking the golf ball. <laughs> so I get in here. I might change, my stance with, I know is a little wider, but I don't really know that it's, that it's a lot. Yeah, I would say you're about an inch or two. But more than anything, it's still the same, but I'm going to apply as much effort as I possibly can. Yeah. If I want to hit a draw, you will, you will see my head will tilt and my eyes will look out this way uh -huh. to shove it out to the right a little bit more, Yeah. especially if I got some runway, Yeah. right? Love it. But more than not, I'm gonna try to hit a fade and the technology sets up for better fade numbers. So here's, here's full send. Oh, good gracious, that's out of here. Woo, so one. that is all I got. <laughs> 120 on the speed again. Now you hit up on it another degree with that extra half inch higher T height. Yep. 334. Thank you. How you doing? That's pretty awesome. 334 in the air for 353 totaled, 1900 on the RPMs, and a launch of 15. About what you were looking for there, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, when you tee it up, you hit up on it a touch more, so you gotta be careful a little bit as you start increasing attack where that path and swing plane go, right? Correct. So how do you balance that? And what do you, or what ball flight do you see change that you know you need to make a change maybe in path? Oh, so mostly it starts on the contact. Okay. If I hit a ball off the toe, then I know that I've done something wrong. Okay. Toe contact for me is a sign that I'm stuck and I'm my body's at impact and my club's not. Uh, so okay. I have this little stand up and dart, then, yeah. then the throw that goes with it. It droops it down and 100%, which is really where the origination for the eye movement came from. Because if I can get my eyes to go where I want to go, yeah, all of me comes. But if I get into hitting it, you see the church bell ring, my head stays back, and there all kinds of problems occur from there. I like it. I like it. So that was impressive to say the least. Let's talk about one last one here for the for the fan favorites. Uh -huh. It's a windy day. Fairway's probably tight. Thinking of all the scenarios you got pegged, I thought you were. Yeah, right. I got so. Like, so when I'm hitting, when I'm trying to take one down, mm -hmm. all right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on average, right? <laughs> From uh, let's see, what was the height of that last one? Like 130 in the air. Yeah. I'm with this new paradigm driver. I, I can't believe how how unbelievable this is. Right now, I wouldn't change anything. Right. Because I'm hitting it. Like I feel like I could drive it down a cart path. Sure. But. In the past, because I've never had anything like this, I would tell you I would be choking up a little bit. This is a tip from Tom Watson. If you choke up on the golf club a little bit, we've yep. talked about this before, talk, mm -hmm. choke up on it, it makes the shaft effectively stiffer. Right, straightens the ball flight a little bit. Straightens the ball flight out a little bit. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna lower the tee mm -hmm. so that the top of the ball, I'm gonna give the tee to just a fraction lower than that. Sure. And the other benefit too to having that lower tee height is there's less tee height options for you to come in at contact. So you really kind of increase your odds of a center strike. 100%. And then here, a lot of, there's a lot of things that I depend, right? Do I have unlimited amounts of space forward? Right. Or am I capped out at like 280 where I can't get it too far? Right. Because that's going to tell my energy level. Right. And three wouldn't get there maybe per se. Yeah. Like right. I, have a, I have a specific yardage you have to get to to get around a corner or something like that, but I can't go too far mm -hmm. because there's a hazard or what have you, right? Sure. So on what I'd call 
stock one, right? Yep. So there's no limit, right? Sure. It's choke up about an inch. Ball position stays about the same. And I will generally speaking, when you shorten the shaft, you're gonna shorten your swing. Yeah. Right? Yep. So we're, yep. I don't have to think about shortening my swing. So I'm just gonna make stock. a stock golf swing sure. with all kinds of decelerators <laughs> put in. Right, 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 right. right. So a relatively stock move just set up to be yeah, different. I set up to be different. Oh, that's beauty. So that's my favorite shot in the world, which is a cut off the heel. Just bleeds out there. Yeah, and it's like all day long, probably 275 ish. 285, yep, yep, yep. So 250 in the air, 285 total. So kind of remember you were spitting ball in there first. What, well, was, the, what, was, the, what was the height? Height, let me pull that up real fast. Probably in it was the, like 80. <laughs> was it? Yeah, huh. 75 ish. I was gonna say, I was thinking 75. Yeah, yep, yep. So that was good. almost like it was half flight for me. Yeah, no, that was awesome. So the uh, you said there was stock one. Is there another yeah, stock? Yeah, so now there's option? stock two, right? Yeah. So stock two is I also have a yardage constraint. Okay. So it's gonna be slower. Okay. That was actually 60 feet. I got the number up now. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So six. I, I would have bet that it was under seventy. Yeah. No, right. That was, yeah. That was so now, once again, speed is spin. Right. Right. So here, I'm going to be imagining that I'm Payne Stewart, that I'm Fred Couples. Yeah. And it's going to be absolutely smooth as it can be. I'm going to put what I call a speed limit on my swing, and I'm going to call it seventy percent. Okay. So I'm just going to be. So right now you're tipping the scales at like 116 to 118, kind of stockish. You went over 120 on the full, so you're thinking yeah. like 110, 108. Yeah, so, so, so I'm choked up a little <coughs> bit. And I'm actually, first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to be super soft in my shoulders when I'm holding the golf club. And this is going to be like one mile per hour faster than okay. too slow. Got it. All right. Once again, um, little cut. A little push cut on that one. Hitting the heel a little bit more than I'd like. Now, would you say it was maybe a little more push cut because as you get a little lazy, there's not enough twist on the shaft? And I will tell you, not that it's an excuse, although it's going to come out as an excuse, <laughs> I forgot to turn my face. Yeah, and there it was. So yeah. I got stuck. I mean, and I would say that's probably a common flaw when people like smooth it out is like you can't, like everything still has to stay the same and then until you kind of play with it and figure out what you don't do as you slow things down. So that's like right. in your case, it's the face. The face gets a little late because that's a accelerator like you talked about that's right. trying to get rid of. So I'm gonna, I, got, I didn't do a good job of making my eyes go. Okay. I got I got back this way. Yep, so I left the face out there and never came back. Path got in and hit it in the heel slightly. Yep. So this one, I'll double down on controlling my eyeballs and once again, have that Payne Stewart slow motion. I've always thought like one mile per hour faster than too slow. All, All day long. That's perfect. I've really found that this, There's my eyes time. is so critical to controlling my golf swing. Mm -hmm. And that right there, there's no reason that I couldn't play that shot every every hole. Yeah, I mean, it was 313. Yeah, and that was, <laughs> and there's a, that's a great example. That was literally 70% effort. Yeah, I mean, you went down to 111, and then you had 275 carry for 313 yeah. total. Never got more than 60 feet again off the ground. Yeah. I mean, nothing touching That's that. That's a bullet. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Just yeah, like so I mean, those are, the, those are the things that I'm trying to do. Now, if I, I said I put a yardage constraint on it, that would have been pretty disappointing because I probably would have hit a perfect shot into trouble somehow. You'd be over, you overperformed the goal, so you're not walking away with disappointment. That's right. That's, that's one of the big keys for me is to always be trying to overperform my expectations. Mm -hmm. And that comes from shot selection and club selection and management selection right of, right. of what you want to do. And when you can constantly choose conservative targets and be aggressive, aggressive minded towards it, almost always you'll outperform your expectation. Even if it goes over the green or it goes too far, you feel better about yourself because you did better than you thought you were going to do. Absolutely. Well, that's why he was hitting the driver because that's his baby. I mean, that's something you've always done well. I, mean, I have, I have generally speaking, I have always driven it really, good. really good. Yeah, I'll pay somebody else to put it out for me though. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. With that, for Verge, thanks for watching. His info's in the description below. If you want to hit bombs and send it downrange, way better this season. Make sure you go check him out. 
And for that, guys, we're on to the next. Thank you.